Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the first episode of Let's Chill. I'm your host Damien and we are doing this live on YouTube. We've already had a technical error where I was muted, but hey, let's go. That's what happens when we do these things live. So in this series, I'll talk about topics that are on my mind and the many stories that come along with it. Uh, this will be a weekly series on YouTube that will be live streamed, typically with me doing something else on screen during story time. I've decided to do these live because I realize I'm not good with pre-recorded content and uh, I typically end up sounding really fake, so I'm not happy with that. So uh, I'm also a perfectionist, so I'll never be satisfied with whatever I record. So the best way to get my thoughts out there is to just uh, do it live. And uh, here we are. Uh, I'll be keeping my eye on the chat like just now. Thank you for everyone that let me know I was muted. And uh, But I won't really be interacting with any of you until the end of the stream where I'll be taking a Q&A uh, with any questions related to our discussion. Uh, for anyone watching the VOD, you can just leave any questions in the comments and I'll answer them uh, on my channel or during the next stream. Uh, as you can see today, I will be talking about card games while opening some Hololive Weiss Schwartz boxes. Uh, I'll be opening this marked one last because uh, I won this one during a tournament and it's a special one. Uh, we can go into more about that later. So, uh, I really want to talk about card games first as like the first topic because uh, it's pretty timely. Uh, Bushiro Championship Series for 2022 was just announced this week and um, literally the same night that I heard about it, I couldn't sleep until like maybe 3 a.m. because I was already trying to book my hotel in Japan because I was so sure that I would win and I'll be taking my trip to Japan in 2023. Uh, I think I was pretty much getting ahead of myself, but this is how much I miss card games in general in my life, I think. Uh, to Even earlier this year for Bushiroad Spring Fest, uh, the team tournament, just knowing that something like that was back and it was a live event that I could attend and it was a big official event that I could attend in person. Uh, I think that was really good to me. Uh, it gave me something to think about and do uh, just between all the monotony of like jobs and just like commute home, all of that, even streaming, right? As much as I love streaming, I think I realized during that time that just playing card games is actually my true single passion and it's the thing that i just get wrapped up in the most and it's i never really considered how big of a part of my life it was i think i really started playing competitive card games in high school and up until then there was always a regional tournament like a weekly new stuff coming out that was like an incredibly huge part of my life i say was as if it's not anymore, but clearly it is because the moment I hear about anything official, I just I just can't sleep. Uh, it's all I think about. I think about making deck lists, what's the best deck, who I'm going to play, what I'm going to play, where I'm going to travel now. Uh, but with how the flights are getting canceled left and right in the United States, I actually don't know how much I'll travel in the second half of the year. But besides just the cards and the tournaments, it's just, I think the people... Uh, is probably what I miss the most, which is really strange because I typically don't find myself as someone that really enjoys other people's <laughs> presence. It, it, it makes me sound really like like an, an introvert, but I kind of am. But when I'm around people and, you know, there's this just being surrounded by people. It's like going to like a concert or something. And yeah, you can listen to the music at home or whatever. Or you can, or it's like the equivalent of like playing online on Discord for a card game. But there's something about being in person and being surrounded by just a bunch of other like minded people, even if you don't like them because they're like smelly or something. It's just a different atmosphere. And I think I missed that uh, ever since uh, 2020 started. <laughs> uh, I like all the card shops were closed, uh, all the products were delayed because of supply chain issues and all that. There was nothing to look forward to anymore. And it was really sad. I think that was probably the saddest I've ever been um, in recent memory. And it was terrifying. I've had people that I talk to that is normally like, you know, pretty chill and like happy people. They messaged me and they were like, I'm depressed. <laughs> and it was so sad. And I'm just like, I would never expect to hear this from this type of people. And it was just, like, one of the hardest things to go through. Um, like, 
it's crazy. But, you know, to jump forward now to 2022, uh, during Springfest, uh, we were playing teams of three. Uh, I played Hololive. We'll go into how I, that was decided later. Uh, and it was just great to meet with people and get together, knowing that you also had a common goal and to just participate in a real life tournament again. And it was just, it was like a fantastic time. And uh, I can only wish that whatever you guys have is like, that's equivalent to this feeling for me. It's something you, that you can do and continue to do. Um, like just, uh, <laughs> I've already tangent <laughs> and it's the first episode. I had like a, I actually have a list of things here that I wanted to go through, but, uh, uh, before I start with the boxes, um, I want to go through a few things that I found while uh, cleaning my room the other day, uh, just to show, you know, and talk about how much friends and people uh, are really important for this stuff. So back in, I believe this was 2016 now, I completely forget. No, it has to be like 2017 or something. Uh, I actually got a first place in a regional. Uh, I kept the card for it. And then uh, I was playing an Angel Pepper deck for a card fight. And while I was playing in my first place uh, position, my friends actually got my key card signed for me by the vice president of Mushiro at the time. And uh, I didn't expect them to do this. Like, all I could think about was, like, winning the tournament. And, you know, my friends were, were there for me to make this occasion even more special without even knowing that I got first place uh, to begin with, just being in the finals. And uh, everything like that was really crazy. Uh, this was I went to nationals for this. This is my Chrono Dran. Uh, I think there's probably only like 23 of these in the world. I don't think it's that expensive, actually, because people don't like this. But uh, yeah, to own like one of 23 cards in the world or something like that. Because I know there were only 23 people at the nationals. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really great. Um, I think the year after that, uh, Bushiro made Dragoborn, which is something that people didn't really play, but I got into it because I liked the game and I knew I could get a trip to Japan that way. And uh, I got a bunch of first places at regionals, but then this was the one that mattered. I got a first place over in California uh, and I got a first place and that was my free trip <laughs> to Japan, all paid for. Uh, and then when I went to Worlds, I got a Worlds finalist uh, card and I got third place for this. I think this card's even rarer. Actually, and this one too. I think this is like a one of six, probably, or like a one of eight. And then this is a one of like 12 or something like that. It's insane. Like, I don't know. And uh, my friend has another copy of this. So we own one, one six. Is that how math works? Yeah, we own one six of the copies of this card in on the world. And I'm sure some other people either don't care about it or they've sold it by now. But I'll always keep this as a reminder of like good times. And just um, knowing that this is an accomplishment I did. I have trophies too, but they're like buried somewhere. <laughs> and uh, hopefully when I redo my room, I can uh, display those just to... And display these too. Probably hang them on my wall somehow. And uh, just to remind myself that I'm not a complete like failure. <laughs> uh, it's it's easy to forget sometimes how, how much you've done in your own life. Um, because, you know, it's it's easier to get down on yourself rather than look at all the positives, but then just cleaning my room and then seeing everything that I've done, it doesn't feel like nothing. Even if this can be inconsequential to like a lot of people, um, your accomplishments are yours. So it's, it's good to be reminded of that. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy that I was cleaning my room and I found these, I, I got pretty emotional, uh, when I was looking through it, I, I just forget you know, sometimes the easiest things, I think this honestly means the most to me because the, the, the autograph cards from the vice president, because I didn't expect this, you know, that I, this isn't, this is like friendship that I earned and not a tournament win because, you know, I might've gotten lucky on a few, on a few games and, you know, I would, I would, I, I can't explain how much this personally means to me. Um, I have to I have to reach out to my friend and thank him again for all this, because um, this was really big, and uh, I I can already <laughs> I can already hear myself getting 
getting emotional. I didn't expect to get emotional like um a few minutes into this, but yeah, it's you know treat your friends good, they'll treat you back, and that's just it, you know. It's it's funny because I just finished watching Hunter Hunter. <laughs> and the final line of the series, uh, you know, the anime at least, is just it's more about the journey rather than the destination. So even though I'll probably spend be spending uh, this next year and any year afterwards uh, chasing a first place at a regional, it just doesn't compare to everything you do along the way with your friends and everything. Uh, yeah, I that's why card games are probably one of the most important things in my life and something I'll always look forward to. Um, not only the competing, just all the adventures along the way. I think um, that's probably the best part about a hobby like this. And anytime uh, something like this comes around, I just I just look forward to doing all of it. So, wow. Okay, that that hit me a lot harder than I thought it would. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I specifically got Hollow Life. Um, you know, obviously because of the uh, clickbaity stuff <laughs> for boxes. Uh, but I also won the um, this box through the Hollow Life Cup. Uh, in in New York. Uh, using Rushia, that's why Rushia is on my cover. Uh, rip in peace. Uh, yeah, this was my deck. Uh, I was really happy with it. Um, Rushia and White Schwartz, oh, Hollow Live and White Schwartz. Uh, I, it was really hard for me to get back in to the, to get back into the game to begin with, because uh, I just haven't played for like two years, and it's really hard to get back into it when you know. It's just something you haven't done in a while. But I realize it's like riding a bike. <laughs> it's it's like riding a bike when it's something that you just love to do. Like, you just pick it up, and then, yeah, that's it. You know, uh, I'm going to start opening boxes here. For uh, audio-only listeners, uh, if you want to look at what I pull along the way, uh, feel free to check out my video, youtube.com slash Damien, and uh, we're going to start on these. But, yeah, it, it was actually a really funny decision while deciding what deck to play. Uh, I was honestly kind of gonna treat the Springfest teams like a throwaway kind of an event and uh, just do it for fun. But uh, I ended up on Hollow Live because uh, my friend who has still played, this is first edition, my friend who still continued to play uh, games uh, throughout the quarantine and the uh, pandemic, uh, what happened was we, you know, he kept playing, uh, we got in and out of the card games and uh, did other stuff. To keep us busy. I did streaming and review, obviously, because that's what you guys know me from. But I um Yeah, so we we, we went to him because this was a team of three. And you know, he told us what all the meta was. Hollow Live just happened to be coming out uh at the time of uh the tournament. And uh, we were just trying to decide who plays what. And he had for and this is more for like the wise players. But he had a bunch of decks, Kaguya, Mushoku Tensei, and uh, he just gave us the whole selection of all his decks to play. And uh, we had a Hollow Life case, and I ended up with Hollow Life because, not I guess because I was a VTuber. <laughs> uh, no, I think the real reason is because um, you know there was. For Hollow Live, it's like spoiled for choice, right? And you have so many options of things you could play. I'm actually really happy that Hollow Live came to White Schwartz because uh, if you just get a trial deck, you're honestly very competitive already. And that makes the ease of access into the game like much easier. You actually don't have to get much stuff from the booster pack, uh, like stuff that I'm getting. Uh, like the Rushia deck that I played is honestly just the trial deck and like three cards. So I'm very happy that Hollow Live. Uh, has brought a lot of people into card games. Uh, even if they're just selecting, I guess, then it's not the worst thing. But I've noticed an, a general uptick in players uh, for White Shorts uh, just because of Hollow Life, so I'm very happy for that. Um, yeah, it's 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 just a good thing overall. But if you ever want to get competitive, just grab your trial deck. You'll probably be good. <laughs> as long as you know the general rules. Um, yeah. Uh, I ended up going 5-1 personally during uh, our spring team tournament, and I was very happy with my performance. Uh, only losing once to a mirror match, and uh, well, that's just how it is, right? When you fight a mirror match, it's a 50-50. Uh, it 
woke up the competitive side of me again because I initially kind of treated it as a throwaway event and it's it's great <laughs> it's it's chasing that rush of getting a first place again you know and like topping and winning i've been chasing the high for like a long time now um just it, it's hard to explain right like not only in physical card games uh i've competed in a lot of digital card games i've gotten back into shadowverse again and I just happened to play a little bit of the take two and I already qualified for something. I don't even know what it is. But the fact that I qualified, <laughs> I don't know. It, it's something about being good at something and also just really enjoying it and just doing it a lot. But uh, I competed a lot in Shadowverse. I've competed a lot in tournaments in Hearthstone. It's just the competition. You know, it's very, it's very addicting. It's a very, very, like, down, like crazy downward spiral. Um, and I've just been chasing it over and over. I mean, I really love competing and I love card games. As much as you guys know me from Verview, it's, um, I think this is actually just my one calling. And yeah. I don't know. There's just something about doing this, like, you know, when something feels right in your hand, um, how can I explain this? It's really, it's, it's such a hard thing to explain, right? I've never had to talk about this with, like, non-card people or, you know, people who do something similar. I can imagine artists just, like, if they pick up a pen and then they start sketching and things just feel right, you know, they just keep, they just keep going, you know. I want to be able to keep going. And I think the lack of being able to do any of that, uh, you know, when we went down for quarantine just kind of put me in this dark place. <laughs> Uh, Revue was a good substitute, but, um, you know, it, nothing's ever the same. Digital card games, it, I can't compare to doing something physical. Uh, it's tough. It's really tough. Uh, yeah. So more about this, this series, uh, I, I actually didn't expect to run out of uh, things to talk about so soon. Uh, I guess I blew the front load of it uh, while not opening boxes. Uh, and I ended up getting emotional, so I actually... Ooh. So I lost a lot of my train of thought. But uh, I'll be bringing in a few more guests uh, occasionally so that uh, it's not so... it's not so lonesome here. Uh, I've already told a lot of stories about my friend and then uh, you can probably actually hear from him now, rather than me like dunking on him all the time. Uh, I can't wait for you to meet a lot of people that I know IRL. Uh, I know so many people with amazing stories that just deserve to get a spotlight on them. Hopefully I'll be able to get some celebrities that <laughs> uh, was supposed to join me occasionally. But uh, yeah, that's not something that could be done. Oh, whoa! <gasps> Oh, I got an SSP Pecora. Holy shit. <laughs> okay, so I just talked about getting special guests on, and I pull an SSP Pecora. Pecora, if you're listening, you already know what to do. You already know what to do. Holy shit. <laughs> okay, well, I know who I'm tagging. Uh, <laughs> oh man yo okay let's uh let's let's leave this up so this is uh so ssps and white shorts are one in a case so the fact that i hit this on a random box uh is pretty is pretty op uh, i didn't expect it to be in the first box and i think uh the box that i won from my title cup probably can't compare to it so uh yeah well, that's, that's it for tonight then, I guess. But hopefully we can hit like a second one or something. Uh, very unlikely. So that was pretty crazy. Uh, I didn't expect to, to hit one so fast. Uh, I'm going to go through... Oh, okay. So just as a comparison. Uh, for audio viewers, uh, listeners, I'm sorry. This is the comparison. Like, geek, look at that. Oh. I, I, I'll show it more to the camera later. For audio listeners, I'm sorry. I'll have to cut this up for you guys. <laughs> but, uh, wow, SSP Pecora. Look at that. That's incredible.
But yeah, uh, card games always treat me well too. Like, I always have these uh, superstitions where if you, you know, buy stuff from like a local vendor rather than buying online, uh, things will just get really lucky. I actually got these boxes, uh, shout out the card quest in Flushing. Oh, they're not in Flushing anymore. On Roosevelt in Queens, uh, wherever they are. I'm sure you can find them in New York if you're in New York. Uh, Dave is always really good to me, so I always treat him good. I always buy stuff from him. And uh, yeah, it's that's just how it is, you know. Respect the people that is around you, and then karma just comes back, you know. I really believe in karma uh, and like superstitions, especially for card games. There's so much RNG <laughs> like th being thrown all over the place. Uh, I think it's only fair to be a little superstitious, you know. You can be as smart as you want, and you can calculate your odds as best as you can. But I think uh, at the end of the day, you just kind of throw it up in the air and you pray to RNGs Jesus and then uh hopefully you know all the all the good things come back to um to help you out and uh I think I had some really good karma on the day that I won my uh regional and got first place yeah always support your locals and uh do what you can to be a good person I think actually, uh, now that I talk about it, uh, when I got my first place with Angel Feather in Card Fight, it was a really funny experience. Uh, so that was the. So and th this is gonna go to stuff that only Card Fight people know about, but basically for my clan Angel Feather, there was a card that people seemed to think was really OP. Uh, it's in my opinion, it wasn't really OP compared to a lot of stuff that was going around at the time. But whatever, people like to hate on Angel Feather even though they haven't really done anything. But, yeah. Um, so what happened was, on the week before uh, the tournament, they actually announced a ban list that banned one of my cards. Uh, it's And it was pretty much an Angel Fever staple. And everyone uh, in my locals just wanted to, like, shit on me so hard. They are like, ha! Huh. You can't play Angel Feather anymore. Look, you, look, you got your card got banned. Look at you. And then, like, meanwhile, they play their stupid, like, cheesy one-hit KO stuff. And I'm just like, all right, whatever, man. Like, what are you, what are you gonna do? All right. But uh, I, I kept believing in my girls. Um, you know, I, I just kept uh, trucking on. I made a few adjustments. Uh, I didn't listen to what Japan does. So in TCGs, typically people just refer to Japan uh, and they're like, oh, Japan did this. Like that's, that's their excuse for like doing a bunch of stupid stuff. They're like, I found, I found a deck list in Japan that played this. And, and I, I think they won like a two man tournament or something. So it must be good. And I'm like, no, man, you gotta be creative. If, if you're not doing your own creativity in like your card game, like what are you even doing? Right. You, you didn't like, you already net decked and you copy someone else's stuff. You're, you're just like going through the motions and you're worse than like a robot because a robot will probably play the deck better than you can. <laughs> but yeah, so I made my own like little innovations to the deck uh, that uh, that weekend. And uh, I only had a little bit of time to test because as you know, like I said, the, the ban list came out a week before. So I, you know, I just took my shot. I did what I thought was best while helping my friends. Uh, who also, oh, he didn't pop that that year, but he popped the next year because uh, it was always one of us or the other, uh, one or the other. But, yeah. Uh, ooh. Okay. But, yeah, I did my innovations. So, it's funny. Uh, the moment that we, right before round one of the tournament, they got on the microphone. You know, they did the usual stuff. Bathroom is to the left. Round one begins and so on. And then right before, but before they did that, they were like, keep in mind, everyone, Dr. Royd Refros and Angel Feather is banned. And everyone in the whole room was like, yeah, fuck Angel Feather, yeah. And my friends, who happened to be like, like a few tables down from me, they all pointed at me and was like, yeah, eat shit. And I'm like, wow, you guys are my friends. <laughs> what are you guys, why are you guys bullying me for this? It's insane. So... You know, I was like, all right, whatever. And then my opponent across from me is like, oh, you play Angel Fever? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, oh, crap. <laughs> actually, no, it wasn't oh, crap. A lot of people actually was like, was like, 
oh, you're, you're banned, your, your card is banned now. How are you going to win? And I'm like, my dude, because I'm better than you. <laughs> That's basically it. Anyone, anyone who thinks a ban list will just like make a player stop being good. Like, like, come on, man. If you're relying on like a super OP card in order to win, it's just like, well, someone else can play the super OP card and they're probably just better than you. This is like actually just uh, our uh, card game example of Asians do it better or something. Someone will always be better than you out there. And if if you think banning a card will stop me from being like like good, then damn, then you're playing the wrong game. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I actually went undefeated that day up until the last round. I lost to a Gear Chronicle player that uh, I know was really good. Uh, and he knew actually how to stop my deck. Uh, and basically, and TLDR, I, I, I went, I think, 7-1. and one. So by that time, I already played uh, 8 rounds or so. But then uh, I was I was a clear cut for a top 8 because I was uh, X1. Uh, yeah, I think. And then from there, it was like a best of 3 rather than a best of 1. Because in the um, in the Twitch rounds, it's always a best of 1 in card fights back then. So... Uh, yeah, uh, it became a best three, and I was able to fight my way there. I think uh, I had I had tournament nerves for sure, because I think in one of my games I forgot to pay for an effect, and then you know with the judges watching, they were actually on my ass about it. I was like, and they were like, okay, fine, I didn't pay for the effect, sure. Uh, but then my opponent did the same thing, so you know, like I said, karma it just comes back. <laughs> you know, it's like okay, uh, but you know, it, it, it's. Things just balance out for a reason, right? The universe is kind of... That's just how the universe works. So I've always believed in it. Card games is my religion. I believe in karma. And uh, things come back to you as long as you're a nice guy and you're not an asshole. Uh, that's also my general rule in uh, in tournaments and like card games. Uh, just don't be a dick, even to your opponent, right? Because if you do that, then you're just asking for some trouble later, right? If, if you make the, a tiny mistake... Like, you put a card down too fast, or something like that, or you did something out of order by accident, and it's like a genuine accident, I'll let you go. Like, and I'll be like, yeah, fine, just just, just do what you want to do. Like, I'm, I'm not, I don't really feel tournament, like, nerves anymore, because uh, I'm just so used to it. I'm just so used to eating shit. <laughs> like, like it, it just tastes good now, right? So I'm just so used to it, so tournament nerves aren't really a thing for me. But I can see why it still gets to people. So if anyone makes a mistake and it's like an honest mistake, I let it go. Because it's better to be like a nice person than to just be like a gigantic bully. Now if you're, but you know, in return, uh, I'll treat you the same way you treat me. If you call me out on something that's very tiny, I'll turn into like, okay, hold on. We just pulled another Pecora SP from the boxes that I just randomly bought from CardQuest. Dave, thank you. Um, I don't know why you summoned Pecora to me, but uh, this seems like a big Pecora night. So <laughs> I definitely going to have to try and get uh, Pecora to at least retweet me or something. So Pecora, I'll be tagging you soon. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So if you treat me with some disrespect, uh, I'm going to give, I'm going to throw it right back at you. You know, if you make a mistake, you better know I am not letting that through you know I am not letting you get away with it because you were the asshole first and uh I think that's just how it is I'm gonna give you karma back you know so I think that's just fair uh I'm probably the fairest I can be uh if you make constant mistakes and you're slow playing then I'm just gonna be like okay man you gotta hurry up you know but I'll, I'll let you go through but if you're in top eight tables I expect you to have some level of um some level of competency otherwise like what happened like are you you're either doing this on purpose or you just sacked eight opponents so hard to get to the top um but anyway wow i changed it uh so i so in that top eight uh it was actually really funny uh my my opponent that beat me uh lost to a really bad matchup against uh for gear chronicle i forget exactly what it was but i basically countered him so i didn't have to worry about the person that beat me in swiss rounds uh, second round went by pretty quick. Uh, I think it's actually still recorded on our original team channel, but I'll have to see for that. Uh, and then in the final, this was actually someone that I knew from, uh, I think it was Pennsylvania. Um, and
and we were just both representing our teams. Like we both had an invite to na uh, nationals already at that point, and we were just fighting for the title of first place. You know, we shook on it. We were like, "Hey, man, congrats, yo, congrats!" And it's like, "Yo, you're giving me the win, right?" And he's like, "Ah, oh, man, I I gotta get the win too." You know, I'm representing a team, and I'm like, "Well, I'm also representing my team. I guess we gotta fight it out." You know, so, <laughs> uh, but we agreed to just make it a best of one so we can all go home and uh, eat our food and, uh, you know, just celebrate. Uh, and I ended up winning the winning the match, I think, in like five turns. He drew a really bad hand, unfortunately. If, if we kept it as a best of three, there was a chance that he could have gotten back, maybe. But it was a best of one. Uh, he opened up not too great, and uh, I was able to take the win. And that was my first first place title win. And uh, I was really happy. Uh, everyone was like cheering and crying. I probably had crying, actually crying. I think I had a team squad of like at least like six to eight people, like just backing me up. They were like, "Yeah, kick his ass, kick his ass." <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was great. Uh, I think my phone was literally like nonstop. Like I was being called nonstop. I couldn't like I was taking a picture with like the vice president and like you know the tournament organizer and everything and my phone just kept ringing I'm like my dude stop calling me I know you want the D so bad but like you know I can't give it to you right now like <laughs> so but that was fun uh it was a really good memory for me uh unfortunately what followed it wasn't so great uh because uh at nationals uh I ran into one of those gummy people unfortunately and um you know how scummy people are in card games they just kind of ruin everything uh, I try not to tell that story too much, uh, and uh, I probably won't hear. Uh, I'll save it for probably like a different time. But uh, yeah, any I, I occasionally still think about it, and it makes me think. Uh, it it makes me wonder if I should question my own morality. Sometimes it's like, is the win for a match worth my own? It's like, do I betray my beliefs? in order to get a win? I think at that point, it's like a really tough uh, question uh, to like ask yourself, right? It's, it's really tough because the point of going to a tournament is to win, obviously. But do you betray how you act and feel in order to, you know, get the, just get the W, right? It's like, it's, it's, I think that's a really tough question because, I don't know, man. It's like, yeah, if I'm an asshole, I can get the win. <laughs> I think it all comes back to how I feel about, like, karmic forces and just, you know, whether or not it's good to be an asshole. I don't know. Uh, okay, so these are uh, promo packs that you only get for winning a the Hollow Life title cup. Uh, they are foil versions of this without the border. Uh, which is really cool. So I'm going to pop these and I'm then I'm going to pop the box that I won from the title cup. And I think that will be close to wrapping up. If you have any questions in chat, uh, let me know. And I'll try to answer them in the post part. And then I think I will call it for tonight. Uh, ooh, ooh, look at how, look how great this is. Look at that. This is crazy. Oh, all right. So <laughs> for, uh, I forget that uh, I will be doing an audio only version of this. So uh yeah unfortunately the audio only version of this won't be able to see the cards but again uh, if you want to see any of the cards and all the foils i'm packing youtube.com slash damien uh, you can see me pull foil pecoras because pecora seems to love me tonight okay but yeah um i don't think it's worth it to betray your own beliefs i feel like at the end of the day you just feel really dirty uh if you if you do it you know, it just, it doesn't feel like me, you know, uh, it's, it's tough because you want the win, <laughs> you want the W, <laughs> that's the whole reason you're there, you know, I, I think it, it, it comes down to questions like, it's like, it's like how much money would someone have to pay you for you to punch a baby, like a question like that, right, except, you know, it's like card games, <laughs> <laughs> like how, how much money would you accept to punch a child you know like they'll it, it doesn't hurt them like, oh okay it's gonna hurt them but it doesn't <laughs> they're not gonna feel the repercussions of it for like i don't know it depends on where you punch them or something i guess but you know for, for like a card game right if if you're like a hard ass on someone because you know and and it'll get you to w 
how much is it going to really affect them? And I, I, I say that lightly, but then at the same time, I know that if someone has a bad experience at like a tournament or something like that, they're going to feel like dejected and then they're not going to feel like playing anymore. They're going to be like, oh yeah, card game community is shit. Uh, this guy cheated me. Something like that, you know, like that's just how it is. I don't know. It's it's really hard. Uh, I tend to stick to my morals as best as I can, like reasonably. But if I see you're trying to take advantage of it, obviously I'm not gonna let that fly because that's just that's just not cool. You know, you shouldn't try to take advantage of people. And um, yeah, just just play the game, man. Why why let outside forces dictate that? If you if you don't play the game well, then like just just, just get out. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we're moving on to the box that I won. We, uh, I guess we're gonna probably get another Pecora or something. I don't know. Hopefully, we get something nice. Uh, if we don't, uh, that's fine. Oh, let's get end on a Pecora. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, card game stories are really fun. Uh, I remember back in the days when I'd be playing Yu-Gi-Oh, and I'd be playing at like the back of a McDonald's because uh, there's no card shops, or like you gotta pay to enter card shops. And uh, those were the days, man. You go to a McDonald's, you just buy like a Happy Meal or whatever. A Happy Meal. When did I ever buy a Happy Meal to play a card game? You buy like a drink. Or you just don't even buy anything. You go to the back, you know, you see all the Yugi heads. And then you just start playing Yu-Gi-Oh! and McDonald's for like hours. And that's how you pass your day, you know. Uh, I used to come from that. Uh, there was a guy that was like really hardcore about it. And this is like one of the stories that I really love. So... This guy, uh, I just, uh, just, I just sat down for a game, and literally every move I did, he called his friend, uh, who he says was a judge, and a judge is someone who like you know officiates the tournaments, uh, like official tournaments, and he kept bugging him for rulings because I guess he didn't know how to play it. Okay, so he he thought he knew how to play the game. He thought he knew. Uh, but no. Uh, for for people in the know for Yu Gi Oh, it was a card trooper. Uh, literally just two effects from Car Trooper, uh, and he just kept calling this guy every time. I'm I'm sure they're not friends anymore or something. <laughs> like, so I, I would play the thing, he would do something to it. Uh, I I should get a trigger of an effect uh, to uh, to draw a card, and he's like, Nah. Oh no, it was the mill. Okay, so yeah, this is definitely all UV. Knowledge. So, uh, card trooper comes out. He's supposed to. Uh, I'm supposed to be able to mill three cards on the top of my deck. He's like, Nah, I countered it. You you can't mill. And I'm like, Nah, milling is cost, bro. I should get the mill. So he takes out his phone. And he calls his. And he calls his friend. He's like, Yo, whatever the hell your name is, son, card trooper. Does he get to mill? And he's like, and I and he put him on speaker as if like to show off that he has a really cool friend. He's like, Yeah, that's that's paying cost. You get the mill. And he's like. Are you for real? Are, are you sure you get the mill? It's it, it, I I I divine wrapped it. He's like, no no no, it's a cost. You you can you know you 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 get the mill. And he's like, damn son, this game sucks. Okay, whatever. And then you know I I, I get divine wrapped. My card trooper is destroyed. Card trooper when it gets destroyed, I get to draw a card. So you know I send mine to the graveyard. I draw a card. And he's like, whoa 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 whoa, I I divine wrapped it. Like you shouldn't be able to draw now. There's no effect on it. And I'm like, no no no. Card Trooper, when it gets destroyed, I get to draw a card because it's a completely separate effect. And he's like, nah, son, that's bullshit. So, like, he calls his friend again. He's like, yeah, yeah, Card Trooper, it gets to draw too? And he, and, and he was like, yeah, you stupid, my N word. <laughs> he just hung, he hangs up on his friend. And then, like, he's like, you know what, man? I don't, I don't even want to play you anymore because because you take this game too seriously. And I'm like, dude, I played a card. I played one card, you call your friend twice on 1-800-COLLECT or something. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I just picked up my shit and I left. I was like, I was like, come on, man. You you can't be that stupid. <laughs> like, Yugi is probably one of the more, like, ruling intensive, like, card games out there. Because every individual card has its own, like, little set of rulings. But that's, like, basic stuff, man. Like, how, how, do, you, how do you mess with that and call yourself a pro? And I think that's what I hate the most too, right? And when it comes to the card game community, and oh, this is me being a hater. Like, I hate these so-called pros. Like, that just like self-proclaimed pros. That make no money from the game. They don't even play in tournaments. And if they do, they don't win. How are you a pro? 
Are you a pro taking the L, my dude? Because that's all you are. Like, why, why are you talking so much smack? Why are you blinging out your whole deck only for it to be not relevant in like a month? And then to call yourself a pro, I'm just like, my dude, what's what's wrong with you, man? You can't, you can't do that unless you're just taking the L, man. Then, then, then that's just it, you know. You can't, you can't be like that. I, that's probably like the only part of the card game community I hate the most. It's just those people. That's probably the most irritating thing. But that's just it, you know. Like, and I learned to just like not deal with those people anymore. Like, I, I avoid them whenever I can. If it weren't for, like, doing trades and stuff to, like, you know, get value out of it, I probably wouldn't even bother talking to, like, any of the people there. But then, you know, you go because your friends are there. They're going. You're doing something fun. And that's just that's just my hangout. So, you know, that's just it. I, I wouldn't purposely put myself in situations like that. Um, just because for my own mental, you know. You have to, you have to take care of yourself. And uh, dealing with those people... Uh, who call you know, a friend over one card twice in one McDonald's sitting? Nah, man, you can't do that. All right, last pack, and I think we didn't get anything in this one, but that's okay. Uh, oh, just as I say it. Oh, okay, it was just a, it was just a nene. Uh, sorry. Okay. All right, that's cool. Uh, that was the four boxes of Hollow Life. Uh, Pecora seems to gravitate towards us, and that's cool. Uh, and uh, it ends on me ranting about uh, really bad players in the community. And I guess um, that was bound to happen. Uh, but I hope, you know, I don't want people to be deterred from... It's like, don't pay attention to them. That's probably the most important part of it, right? If you pay attention to all the baddies, then, then you're just going to have a bad time no matter what, you know? And I think um, that's probably the takeaway from doing your hobbies. Like... Everyone always says something like the League of Legends community is toxic AF. And um, that's just like, yeah, sure. But like, if you just play among your friends and you turn off their all chat, then like, yeah, play League. Do do whatever. Play play mid support or whatever the hell you're doing, right? Like, who cares? You know? just, just, just do your thing. And um, that's probably just the best way to do things. Um, just ignore the haters, I guess, you know, and like all the stupid people because there's going to be a lot. Uh, okay, so I'm going to start wrapping up here. Uh, a few of you in the chat, if you have any questions uh, regarding to card games, uh, I'll definitely want to answer them uh, before we stop the stream for tonight. I probably have a lot of editing to do for this uh, because this is the first one and there was a lot of mix-ups, including uh, me being mute at the start. But uh, yeah, it's all good. Uh, I, I learned here. Uh, I'm really happy with these Pecoras. <laughs> I'm definitely going to tag Pecora, uh, see if I get a response. Uh, anyone who's on Twitter, you should totally try to... Uh, uh, make this like really big so I can uh, so I can try to get her attention and uh, hopefully we get a retweet and then I will blow up and uh, we'll see what happens <laughs> uh, but yeah I think that's what uh, most people can relate to right no matter what you do in all your communities there's always those like bad eggs that just make the make things not enjoyable and um, but just don't let it get to you you know if if you like doing something damn just do it as long as you're not hurting anyone as long as you're not being like a bully and just being like an ass like that that's just like the best thing about doing stuff um yeah i think i think that's the healthiest mentality i can take for a minute uh if if you are enjoying if you're letting someone else get in the way of your enjoyment then you know what to do right just you know, just get away from them that's probably the healthiest thing that you can um that you can do and uh, I think that's honestly the takeaway that we'll get from here uh, I've enjoyed my streaming a lot and sometimes just one person or two makes like a comment that like makes me just hate doing everything and uh, I think I take it to heart a little too much uh, same thing right when I won my when I won my regional with uh, Angel Feather um, people didn't respect it for some reason they, they said I did something cheesy even though my card got banned like the week before people are like oh you got lucky i'm like you know what you can fuck yourself <laughs> and i think um i think we're gonna i think we're gonna end with that right uh if people are disrespecting you uh tell them to go fuck themselves <laughs> i think that's a life uh, life lesson uh for this video and um, yeah uh hopefully uh i can do more of this uh i want to keep this up weekly as a series next week uh i will try to rope my friend along um and we're gonna be playing something very cool. 
uh, something that's usually not my flavor. But you know what? I'm going to kick his ass, and uh, we're going to find out a lot more about him. And uh, hopefully I can find out a bunch of stuff too, because this is a mysterious, mysterious man in my life, and uh, <laughs> I want to see what we can get out of him. So guys, thank you guys for watching. Uh, let's chill again next week, guys. I'll see you guys around. Peace out.